Today, I'm going to talk about the only sugar that won't raise your blood sugar. Now, I see you're getting pretty excited about this, but before you get too excited, let me explain. Sugar is classified in a certain way. You have something called a monosaccharide and you have disaccharides. So let's just talk about those first. So a monosaccharide is like a one individual sugar molecule, like glucose. That would be a monosaccharide. Mono meaning one, saccharide means sugar. And you also have another monosaccharide called fructose. And if you combine these different monosaccharides together, you have different types of sugar. For example, table sugar is about 50% fructose and 50% glucose. And then you have honey, which is 30% fructose and 70% glucose. Then you have other sugars like lactose, that's like milk sugar. That would be glucose plus another type of monosaccharide called galactose. And then you have something called high fructose corn syrup because it's a combination of glucose and fructose could range anywhere between 55 to 90% fructose. And then you have agave nectar, which is combined of glucose and fructose. And fructose in agave nectar is about 85%. Okay, so it's a lot of fructose. Then you have fruit. Fruit is a combination of glucose plus fructose. But the fructose in fruit can vary between 1% and 30%. Now you're probably saying like, what would be 1%? Well, it could be like avocados, that would be considered a fruit, or maybe uh, olives, that would be considered a fruit. Very low sweetness, right? Very low fructose. What's interesting about fructose is that it's the only sugar that does not activate the beta cells. That's the cells in the pancreas that release insulin. It does not increase your blood sugars, at least initially. When you think about it, when you go to the doctor to get your blood sugar tested, they're not going to be checking how much fructose that's in the blood. They're going to be checking how much glucose is in the blood. Two completely different monosaccharides. And fructose as a sugar is like twice as sweet as table sugar. And this is another reason why uh, manufacturing companies might be putting fructose in our food because it's just sweeter. If you take artificial sweeteners, you're talking about a factor of like 10,000 to 100,000 times sweeter than sugar. So that's why you need just a tiny bit. And humans lack the enzyme to convert fructose into glucose. So when this was studied and realized that, wow, fructose does not increase your blood sugar, they started to recommend it for diabetics. But let me explain the other half of the story, okay? Because fructose follows a different biochemical pathway than glucose. Glucose is absorbed by all the cells, but fructose is only really absorbed by the liver. Some of it passes through the intestine because it's not easily absorbed and it can get into the colon where your microbes have a frenzy, okay? It's kind of like crack to your microbes and they will start eating this up and start growing rapidly and you'll get a lot of gas and sometimes diarrhea and a lot of digestive bloating and all sorts of digestive problems. This is why a lot of people cannot do fruit or just fructose in general. But what about the stuff that's absorbed to the liver? I wanna talk about that because that fructose in your liver, that can be converted to glucose and stored as glycogen. Now, if there's enough glycogen stored in the liver, then the body will instantly start making triglycerides, which are blood fats and cholesterol. It's been well documented that fructose will make a liver very fatty very quickly if you consume enough of it, right? But we don't consume very much of it. Well, it just so happens that uh, kids, for example, 25% of their calories are in the form of fructose on average. That is crazy. So we're consuming a massive amount of fructose in many different forms. The other problem with your liver becoming fatty and you producing all these triglycerides is that will now create insulin resistance in a bad way. Okay. More potently than glucose. So now we're going to actually go right into diabetes a lot quicker. And now the body's going to produce more insulin indirectly. So just because fructose is low on the glycemic index and it won't raise your blood sugars, it will do it indirectly and create problems way worse than glucose, but in a different way. I'm sorry, you just kind of got excited there, right? You thought maybe you could start consuming fructose. Well, 
you don't want to do that. That fructose will also be converted to uric acid, right? So now your gout increases as well. And the more uric acid you have in the kidney, the less vitamin D you're going to activate because the activation of vitamin D happens mainly in the kidney. So that could be another problem. And we're going to end up with more inflammation and also profound atherosclerosis. That's right. It leads right to the clogging or the placking of your arteries. Now in certain mice studies, and by the way, like mice and humans uh, don't have that enzyme to convert fructose to glucose. Uh, there is shown a, a spike in homocysteine by 72%. Also, you're going to get low leptin levels and that has everything to do with your appetite. So you're naturally going to not get satisfied and you're going to overeat when you consume fructose. Probably another reason why they use high fructose corn syrup in so many drinks is to get you to drink more and more because you're not going to be satisfied. Given that information, you can have alternative sugars. Okay. These are called sugar alcohols. And for that information, you should watch this video right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books it's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.